Welcome back, y'all, to another edition of Rudy's Rants. This is your boy, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, with Come On Now, the podcast. I am stepping in again because I have another topic to talk about. And, uh, of course, we will have our weekly podcast. But Cheryl Swoops, the gift that keeps on giving. Just when you think someone has learned to not say silly stuff, she keeps saying silly stuff. As she keeps trying to defend herself, she keeps saying new silly stuff. So recently, again in the past week, she's been on Gil's Arena once again to try to explain herself, to try to defend herself. And she did with another slew of comments that you could take a listen for yourself. So, you know what, let me start here. First of all, to your point, um, I've actually spoken with Angel, had a great conversation with Angel on the phone, um, messaged with Caitlin, um, because I don't have her number, but I messaged with Caitlin on Twitter. She responded. She and I had a really good conversation. Um, I'm going to go here first, because the, I'm going to say the hate that, like, came my way was, like, real. Like, real and real ugly. Everything from racist to nigga to bitch to monkey to you, anything you can think of. My mama used to say everything but a child of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, when I, like, when we had the discussion, I guess that was, I don't know, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't personal. It was one, it was my opinion on how I think she'll be at the next level, how I think Angel will be at the next level. But a lot of people, I guess, were upset when, you know, I was like, well, yeah, it's her fifth year, but it's really her fourth. But to your point, they didn't listen to the whole thing because you did correct that. Um, I, I, I'm going to say this, and then I want to, like, be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like, first of all, black people can't be racist. But, like, that's the farthest thing from my mind. Like, I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best childhood friend is white. Went to a predominantly white college, won a national championship. Pretty much everyone on the team was white. Like, we're sisters to this day. Like, like that's not a part of my DNA. But for me, it's very important, though, that, like, I'm a black woman, you know? So it's important for me that I speak up for people that look like me. Like, it's Black History Month. So, like, our ancestors fought and died for us to have opportunities that we have today. So anytime I have an opportunity to obviously be on the podcast or, or anything where I feel like it's important for me to speak up um, and show support, that's what I want to do. Um, I have, like, no issues with Caitlyn. Her breaking the record, I think, obviously, is a tremendous accomplishment. Although, you know, we could get into that discussion also, because there was a big debate on Lynette Woodard having yeah. the actual record. Um, but I, I think what Caitlyn has done for not just college basketball, but for women's basketball, period, I think has been great. The following, people watching the game, sellouts that we haven't seen ever. Um, it just really bothers me, though, when, when people just take bits and pieces of what they want to take, <laughs> and they don't listen to everything, and you don't hear everything. Because I do remember me saying that Caitlin, to me, could be the best college shooter I've ever seen, right? Um, so I don't. I don't have any hard feelings towards Caitlyn. No hard feelings toward, towards Angel. I, my thing is when you put these expectations on these young women in college to go to the next level and be immediately dominant, and when that doesn't happen, then people come back and say, oh, she was a bust, she yep. was a flop, she wasn't yep. that good. <clears throat> like, just let them do what they're doing in college enjoy what they're doing in college, and let them become stars in the WNBA. Like, it's not about me 
liking you, not liking you, me hating on you. Like, I don't even know how to let those words come out of my mouth. But um, yeah, it was just, it was a lot. But I do, I, and I have to say this before we move on. So to like every single person on social media that like held it down for me, that was like, oh no, we're not doing this. Like I got mad love and respect for all of them for showing up and showing out and making sure that I was good because people were checking on me. Um, and, and I'm very appreciative of that. So now that you heard her comments, let me address a few things that she stated. Systemically, in the United States of America, there is systemic racism, without a question. Without question, it's unequivocal. It's seen every day. But to make a statement that she, black people can't be racist, well, I, I suggest she go to Webster's Dictionary and actually look up what the word racist means. And she'd be wrong. Just that simple. She'd be wrong. Because even Gil in the show contradicted her on that. When he asked, black people can't be racist? Yeah, anyone can be racist. White people, obviously. Hispanics, without a doubt. Blacks, no question. So when you use terms like someone can't be something, someone can't be racist, it's just simply not the case. <clears throat> but once again, she says something that is Becoming typical of Cheryl Soup's and silly comments when she starts off her, her, when she starts off her defense of herself with that comment and then follows it up with the oh so wonderful, I have white friends. Are you flipping kidding me? You have what? You grew up in West Texas with white people. You went to a white high school. You went to a white college. Y'all are still sisters and all that stuff. Fabulous. You know what? Who cares? Because if a white person ever said some dumb shit like that and said, I can't be racist. I got black friends. Get the fuck out of here. You would look at them like they were crazy. Because that's the typical white person response to your racist. But I got black friends. Like, like don't matter. So what does that mean? That's not a defense for what she did. Now, to sit here and say she's racist or not, I don't know if she's racist or not. I do think there was some race involved in her feelings because the, the idea that this lily white girl from Iowa is smashing everyone's records may bother her. I think initially it's bothered her because she broke her record in the NCAA tournament. And, of course, she puts in there that her record was a five-game record and Clark's is a six-game record, which, for me, I have no problem if you acknowledge one as a five-game record and one as a six-game record. But the problem with Cheryl Soups is Cheryl Soups changes her stance. She changes the, 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 she changes the discussion. She doesn't actually stick to what she said. And she's sitting here saying that she gave an opinion. And I'm going to repeat once again. I don't care what your opinion is. If your opinion is that you don't think she's going to be a great player in the WNBA immediately, immediately out of college, that's perfectly fine. I have no reason to have, I have no issue with that because the fact of the matter is I don't think anyone's been sitting here saying she's going to be dominant the second she walks out, but she's, but Cheryl is creating this narrative that media is pushing that. Caitlin Clark's going to be a star immediately out of high, out of college. I haven't heard anyone say that. And I watch women's basketball. So I don't know who's saying that. Will she be, have an impact immediately? Absolutely. To sit here and say she won't is disingenuous. The woman has range from the parking lot. She's going to end up on a team that needs someone to put the ball in the hole. More than likely the Indiana Fever, and she's going to be teamed up with a couple of really good young players, Leah Boston and Kelsey Mitchell, and they're going to have one hell of a threesome right there. Well, trio. And you're, she's going to have open looks, and she's going to, she's going to take and she's going to make them. So to sit here and say that she won't have an impact, she's going to have an impact. Now, that doesn't make her a bust if she's not as good as some people might think. I think she'll be a good WNBA player. Do I think she'll be a great one? I don't know. I honestly don't care. 
But when you change the narrative and you change the argument and talk about stuff like, well, you know, you know, the, the breaking the record, mind you, she still has not said the, this, the, she has not said this. Congratulations, Caitlin Clark, on breaking the, the, the women's scoring record. She hasn't said it yet. She didn't say it after she broke it. She hasn't said it after she, after she broke Lynette Woodard's, uh, record. And I'm sure she's not going to say it today after Caitlin Clark broke Pete Maravich's number. Now, it becomes really aggravating to listen to this type of, it's, it's, it is hate. You can sit here and say what you want. Whatever the hate is, it's a, there's a hate involved in this. There's a dislike. It, 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 something, something, there is something that Cheryl Soups has an issue with when it comes to Caitlin Clark. It's clear. It's absolutely clear. Even to the point where she says, I had a great conversation on the phone with Angel Reese, but I didn't have Caitlin Clark's phone number. So I had a D we were DMing a great conversation on Twitter. Oh, I don't know what, 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 I don't know how that's a conversation. You're texting each other. So why in that Twitter conversation did you not ask Caitlin for her phone number so that you could call her? Like, get out of here. I, I don't know. So all these things are being said, and now it's brought up that, oh, she broke the record, but is it really the record? Because, you know, Lynette Woodard has the record from Kansas. Guess what, Cheryl? I hate to break this to you, but the AIWA, -A -A -I, I think that's what it is, the AIWA is a separate organization. This is an NCAA record. Stop trying to change the story. It's an NCAA record. And the AIWA is a different organization, the one that preceded um, the NCAA having women's basketball. But look, guess what? Why didn't you say that when you were talking about Kelsey Plum? You didn't. You didn't bring that up. You mentioned nothing of it. And now that's your new stance. Now it's... She didn't really break the record. Well, guess what? She did break the record. She broke it after you recorded that nonsense. And now she has that record too. So are you okay? Or are you still, or is it now that you're going to bring up Pearl Moore? I'm, I'm guessing that's your next one is that she hasn't broken Pearl Moore's number from Francis Marion College. Just for those of you who don't know, most people had no idea who Pearl Moore is. I had no idea who she was, but uh, you know what? It took a simple Google search and I looked her up. And I learned a little bit and I educated and I educated myself. Pearl Moore had the record from Francis Marion. Francis Marion is the is the equivalent to a Division II school. And when they had the AI, AIWA, they were on the equivalent of the Division II AIWA program. So for people to even consider a Division II level record as the same as a Division I record, y'all can miss me with that garbage because it's just ridiculous. She has a Division II level record. Congratulations. That record will live on in perpetuity. There's someone else who scored like 4,000 points at another Division II level program, I think going on this year right now. Congratulations. But let's not act like Division II basketball players are competing with Division I ball players. They're not. They're not. Otherwise, they'd be in playing Division I ball. Division II players aren't transferring to Division I programs. Right now. So let's, let's stop trying to minimize. It's just stop trying to minimize what this young woman's accomplished. What she's accomplished is everything. Now, <clears throat> you, you know, there's, she said some things about how she was getting, you know, direct messages and, and, and racial slurs. That's completely unacceptable. People who do that are pieces of garbage and they deserve to rot in whatever hole they came from. So if you're messaging out, Racial slurs to Cheryl Soups, you're a piece of shit. That's just ridiculous. You, you, you know, it's very easy to have a d debate and a dialogue without freaking spewing out racial slurs. That's just ridiculous. I, I hate that. And, and, and when it comes to debating topics, debating topics doesn't, re doesn't need to require you cursing at, I'm, when I say cursing at someone like, like you don't have to start insulting somebody. I'm not going to insult Cheryl Soups. Cheryl Soups basketball career was unbelievable. She was a fabulous basketball player, but she says it wasn't personal. It was personal though. Stop lying about what's personal and what's not, because if it wasn't personal, you would have used facts. Stop. When you say it wasn't personal, personal, when you lie about someone on three separate occasions, first that she was 
played, in her, she was in her fifth year, and then she had another year and all that other nonsense. Then it was that she takes 40 shots a game. Then it was that, I'm sorry, then it was that she was 25, which is so off the wall. And then it was that she takes 40 shots a game. You did that. You said, and in fact, the 40 shots a game comment you made after Josiah Johnson stated to you, she's in her fourth year. And instead of at that moment, you could have killed this right then and there. And you're mad about it because if you had just said, you know what? Everything I just said was completely incorrect. And I apologize. I am mistaken. I thought she was in her fifth year or whatever. I thought she was 25. It just shows I had done no research whatsoever. I thought she was 25. I thought she was in her fifth year and all that stuff. No, instead, what she did was she said, oh, well, she takes 40 shots a game. Actually, Cheryl, she does not. She takes 19 and a half shots a game. You know who took almost 40 shots a game? Pete Maravich took almost 40. 40 shots a game. He averaged 38 shots a game. So when he corrected you, you didn't acknowledge his correction. You kind of like dismissed it, brushed it off, and then doubled with another comment about how she takes 40 shots a game. That's a problem. Now, you also made a comment about how I have to speak up for people that look like me. What are, we, what are you speaking up about? Like, who are you defending? You have to speak up for people who look like you. Who were you defending? You weren't defending anyone. No one. In fact, Kelsey Plum is white. Maybe you thought you were defending a black girl's record. Maybe you did. Kelsey Plum is white. Go look it up. Go look at her mom. Go look at her dad. Go look at her. She's white. So I, I, I don't know what you felt you were defending but you weren't defending anything. You were just talking out of your ass. You know, so, so that, that I lose that, that just misses me altogether when you're saying you're defending something because you're black. No, you're not. You're just talking. And if you could actually show me what you were defending, I'd listen, but I don't know what you were defending. You say she could be the best college shooter ever. Yeah, could be. I think she is. I think she's proven that she is. Um, but this stuff about putting expectations on players and the media doing and all that stuff, you know what? Oh, well, that's part of life. That's part of being a ball player. LeBron James has been dealing with that since he was in high school. The second that man walked out of high school, he went to the NBA as an 18 year old, 19 year old, and he has been dominant since. Victor Wembanyama, he's dominant. They're losing, but he's dominant. And you know what? What's wrong with having expectations? What's wrong with having the bar set high for yourself? What's wrong with that? And you know what? If she comes out and averages eight points a game for her career, yeah, she would be deter She would be the equivalent of a bust. But that's life. That's part of what life is. That's part of what sports are. So sitting here and saying you're so worried about what people are going to think, like, come on, man. I just... I don't like hearing people claim an opinion when they're not claiming an opinion. Your opinion is your opinion. Your opinion that she won't be a great, she may not be a great WNBA player immediately out of school. You're, you're entitled. You have the knowledge. You played professional basketball. You that 100%. Some people may not agree with you, but that's an opinion. But when you attach it and you start off with lie, lie and lie those aren't opinions and you keep trying to defend things that are not opinions so you know with that said i would love to hear what everyone has to say you know leave a comment but you know subscribe to our channel we appreciate you and i thank you for your support of this great channel we're building up as best as we can and, and real talk i i was a big like i said before i was a big cheryl swoops fan but man, you need to learn when to just stop. Just at a certain point, take the L. Say I was wrong. Like she has not said publicly she was wrong yet. She has not said anything about being wrong publicly yet. So what does that say about her as a person? She will never admit to being wrong, even when she's clearly wrong. 
And again, I'm not talking about her opinion. I'm talking about the lies. That's all I got. Rudy's rant. Come on now. See you soon.